Hi, my name is Rohan More and I'm from the Japaloop Equestrian Center. And today's discussion is going to be about a disease which I'm sure all horse owners have heard about or unfortunately had to deal with, uh, which is laminitis. And uh, we're going to be discussing this from a horse owner's perspective and, uh, you know, in terms of what to expect. Uh, I'd like to thank our, uh, uh, you know, our sponsors and knowledge partners for this event, uh, which is Comprehensive Equine Services, um, where Dr. Ramanathan has been um, almost a sort of a legend in this field of equine uh, hoof care and podiatry, and uh, has been somebody who's guided us in making sure that the right information reaches you all. So um, in today's discussion, what we're going to cover is what is laminitis exactly? So we understand what exactly is happening, uh, the signs of laminitis, what to do and what to expect if your horse has laminitis. And of course, understanding the cause of laminitis and through understanding what's happening, um, hopefully to be able to also prevent it from happening. Now, let's go to the first point and uh, talk about what is laminitis. Now, what laminitis is, is actually a very painful condition. There's the horses uh, are in a lot of pain when they get this, this, uh, this uh, disease. And it can cause sometimes permanent damage to hooves. And uh, it basically affects uh, very delicate structures inside the horse's hoof, which are called the laminae. Now, the laminae essentially is holding the horse's hoof onto the horse's leg. It's like a sort of a Velcro. Uh, type thing and um, when the horse gets laminitis these laminae get uh, affected and they get uh, very highly swollen and infl inflamed and they start uh, dying and losing the ability to hold the horse's coffin bone or the p3 bone onto the horse's hoof so that's basically what the disease is in a nutshell now uh, some scientists say that uh, the in laminitis, the blood flow is affected and it results in inflammation and swelling within the hoof. And of course, with the swelling comes very severe pain. Uh, think of it as um, your foot has swollen up inside a shoe and the shoe cannot get any bigger and your foot is swelling up and swelling up. And that's, of course, going to cause you a lot of pain. And uh, the like I said, and as you can see in the image over here, uh, a healthy hoof, the laminae are absolutely keeping the P3 or the coffin bone stuck to the front wall of the hoof. But once the horse gets laminitis, um, the laminae starts dying and the P3 bone uh, or the coffin bone, it's, as you can see in the second image, starts to separate and there's a gap between the hoof wall and the bone and some cases um, along with rotation which is where the bone separates from the hoof wall. There is also sinking where the entire bone sinks down. Um, laminitis, of course, most commonly affects the horse's front legs, but it can also happen in a horse's hind legs. It is rare, but it has happened. And over time, the laminitis causes the lamina to stretch and weaken and uh, they get damaged. And like I mentioned in the slide, it leads to them separating. So. If you look at a horse's normal foot over here, and uh, you'll see in the image, uh, you know, uh, over here, that the P3 bone line and the P2 bone line is perfectly aligned with the hoof wall. And this is a healthy hoof. There is no uh, change in it. But the instant we look at a laminitic hoof, uh, we see what has happened is this, the line over here of the bone and the uh, p2 and p3 bone has changed and it's immediately the line over here has all become um, out of alignment and that's where we know that we are horses having a laminitis episode or they started to have laminitis and we need to now start taking some very serious measures to make sure that this horse is well looked after the question is um, of course how do we recognize what's happening and this is a really important part of our discussion um, laminitis is one of those diseases that the faster you recognize that there is uh, that something is wrong with your horse's feet the better you can react to it and 
it also means that if you react to it in time, um, your horse, you can save your horse, your outcome is going to be much better. Um, if you delay it, I'm unfortunately, uh, that kind of makes things a little difficult and uh, is going to make saving your horse a little bit more harder. So your best chance in overcoming this disease for your horse is in early detection. And it's really important for you guys to be able to recognize and uh, investigate any signs. So if you see any of the signs that are coming up that we are going to discuss now, uh, it means that you need to look very carefully and watch the horse closely for various signs. So the first early symptom that you may see, and again, I'm going to tell you this, you may see some of these, you may see all of these. In the rare cases, you may see none of these, but it doesn't mean anything yet. So the most common symptom is, of course, the horse is unwilling to walk. Or if the horse is walking, he's walking like he's walking on sharp, pokey stones and is very painful. The second symptom which you may see, because the horse's feet are hurting a lot, the horse will spend a lot of time lying down. Even in the day, you'll find the horse is lying down and sleeping a lot. You will find another symptom of severe pain, which is an elevated pulse rate. The horse's pulse rate or heart rate will be 60 beats per minute or more. Uh, the horse may show other signs of pain like sweating or heavy breathing. Um, it could be there. And in certain cases, the horse will not show any of these, but will constantly shift weight from one foot to the other foot and will just look very uncomfortable in his feet. So this is also something that you want to look very carefully. If your horse is not the kind of horse who's constantly moving around and the horse is doing it, it's time for you to look hard and see why this is happening. Uh, in certain cases, the hoof will be warm to touch or the coronary band will be warm to touch. Uh, it could be something that is telling you that uh, there's there an indicator of the inflammation or the swelling inside the horse's hoof. So warm hooves are a sign. And of course, the painful uh, part of the sole, which is between the tip of the frog and the toe, um, as we've mentioned over here, there is a, a red line, the red area, which I've marked on the slide. Um, if you use a hoof tester over there, the horse will immediately be painful because of course the tip of the P3 bone or the coffin bone is now pressing down. So when you use the hoof test over there, the horse will show immediate pain. Um, this is another possible symptom. Um, one way that you can confirm uh, something's up is that you will find a very strong digital pulse. Now, a digital pulse is there is an artery in the back of the horse's pastern just beneath the fetlock and uh, if you like you like I've shown in the photograph if you just use two fingers you can feel it um, normally if you feel a digital pulse it should be very light and it should not be very strong but if you can touch it and you get a nice thumping strong bounding pulse it means there's something up over there that you need to look at more carefully another classic symptom of laminitis is what we call as a rocking horse stance is where a horse shifts his weight back to onto the hind legs to relieve the more badly affected foreleg. You can see in this picture, the horse is taking all its weight or as much weight as possible from its front feet into its hind feet and uh, trying to keep the weight you know, off its front and make sure it's comfortable. Um, I'm gonna play a video for you. And uh, in this video, you'll see the same way the mare is absolutely unwilling to walk and uh, is walking like she's walking on sharp stones or something. And uh, that is also a very classic sign. So she, this mare is very obviously laminitic, but uh, unable to, uh, I mean, able to walk a little bit. And uh, like I said, the stance of being able to sit back and, uh, you know, lean back and take all its weight on his hindquarters is because the front feet are hurting so much. Chronic laminitis or symptoms of a horse that's had laminitis for a very long time and now it's become less serious but it's just a slow disease and uh, the main uh, sort of symptom of this will be uh, the hooves of the horse will kind of change and look very different. So you will get typically these laminitic rings on the hoof if you see over here 
and uh, these rings or these ridges on the hoof are very indicative they will tell you that uh, you know what uh, this horse has had some sort of a hoof or a laminitis problem in the past if you're looking at purchasing a horse with something like this on his hooves um, you might want to think again because uh, if I mean that would indicate that the horse has had some sort of a problem with his feet in the past and of course as the uh, disease progresses uh, the hoof will keep changing and you'll see this long toe uh, we call it the slipper shape uh, hoof and uh, this is another indication of a long-standing laminitis problem in certain severe cases if you pick up the leg you will see a bulge in the sole of the horse's hoof where the p3 bone or the coffin bone has been pressing on the sole and pushing out um, this is generally in a very worst case scenario that has happened um, it's not exactly a nice thing to see a horse with if left untreated if you do nothing um, eventually unfortunately it will mean that the horse most horses will die um, because they just cannot deal with the pain and the uh, inflammation from their system from the laminitis some horses will uh, somehow manage to come correct themselves and come back but it's very very rare uh, and in most cases they will be severely crippled because their hooves will be in a very bad shape and it takes a long time for them to recover it's not common um, it takes years and um, you need to make sure that if you see a case of laminitis you immediately immediately get a veterinarian to attend on it if you see over here uh, this is the hoof of the horse which is off this foot and it has just fallen off and um, the horse has literally left his hooves behind this horse unfortunately did not make it um, and this is the front feet of the horse as you can see and the back feet of the horse that look absolutely normal but um, the horse did not make it be careful about doing a self-diagnosis uh, you need to definitely get a veterinarian and a farrier to look this horse if you look looks very uh, similar to the mare in the previous slide uh, where she looks laminitic but uh, the truth is this horse was not laminitic at all it had just a very bad hoof abscess uh, you need a veterinarian you need a farrier and have some diagnostic work done uh, to make sure that you know exactly what the problem is uh, this horse just had a hoof abscess and it sorted itself out with the right care what should you do if you suspect your horse has laminitis it's actually very simple first and foremost you need to get a good veterinarian a good farrier and you need to make sure that your commitment to nursing the horse is 100% you have to promise to look after the horse and give it your best shot otherwise you're not going to end up saving the animal that is your recipe for the best outcome laminitis is an emergency and the faster you get into solving the problem the better it is for you and the horse so your first step is to call a veterinarian immediately and follow the treatment plans that the veterinarian has is going to give you uh, to make sure that the damage to the horse's feet is reduced as much as possible. The second thing that you want to do is stop feeding all grain based high energy feeds. You have to feed only dry grass and it's very important to provide clean water and feed kutti if at all plus oil if you need to but that comes at a later point in the initial stages till the doctor comes and sees the horse only dry grass nothing else. The third and most important step over here is to create an ice bath for the hoof for four days non-stop. It will help numb the pain, reduces the swelling inside the hoof, the inflammation inside the hoof and actually has been shown to halt the progression of the disease till you can treat the matter. Um, you can either use, uh, there are specific ice boots that you can buy from abroad to, um, for this or you can use a recycled uh, tire tube which has been tied up uh, and uh, fill it with ice and it's really important that you ice the horse's foot right up to the knee to make sure that there is maximum cooling keep the ice on the horse non-stop so when the ice melts you have to keep adding it you have to do this for a straight four days 
to help with the pain and the inflammation. In the meanwhile, your veterinarian should have been able to treat the horse and find out why there is laminitis and then uh, giving you a solution for what you can do. Another important thing that is your veterinarian and your farrier are both going to require is an x-ray. Mobile human x-ray machines work very well. That's what we use at Japalu. And what you want to do is very simple. Just shoot an x-ray of the horse's foot and um, send these x-rays to the vet. Most cities uh, in which have got hospitals will have a mobile x-ray unit where they come home and shoot x-rays of uh, uh, people at home. They have, it's, it's, they'll come in a car or an ambulance and do it. So human x-ray is absolutely fine. And you can always WhatsApp these x-ray images to your veterinary consultant so he or she can come prepared accordingly to make sure that the right treatment is done for the horse and create a soft bed in the stable of sand or wood shavings to make sure that uh, when the horse lies down it's not hurting itself as you can see in this image this horse has been sitting down for so long that he scraped himself up completely so you want to make sure that does not happen by giving it a nice thick bed you are going to need a really good farrier and more importantly uh, your nalband or your farrier has to be somebody who understands laminitis and has dealt with it before and has fought with it before so he is going to or she is going to make sure that they do it correctly. Uh, the idea is going to be to uh, realign the uh, P3 or the coffin bone but um, this is something that you don't want to give to an amateur farrier. Uh, don't try and save yourself a hundred or five hundred thousand rupees on this. Uh, spend the money, get the right person, that's when your best outcome is going to be there. Um, one of the things that your farrier may do is he might use a therapeutic or a, a special shoe to treat the laminitis. Um, I've got some examples down here of steward clogs or wooden clogs or a glue shoe. Of course, there's something known as the former hoof, which is the very latest technology in, um, in, in horseshoeing. But that's not available in India. Most of these things are not available in India. Uh, what I would recommend if you do have a laminitis case in India is to use the Eclipse Series 1 shoe which is designed by Dr. Ramanathan who is both a veterinarian and a master farrier and uh, these are an incredible pair of shoes. Uh, we use them a lot for therapeutic shoeing not just for laminitis but for a lot of other shoeing also at Japalu. Um, they work really well, they support the horse's foot, reduce pain and uh, you'll immediately find that your horse is going to come back to work a lot faster. The management of a laminitis case is possibly one of the most important things that you need to do. What do you expect is that this is going to be a long fight. Now, the veterinarian is going to obviously give you uh, medicines to control the horse's pain and the inflammation. And the pain is going to make the horse lose weight. So, don't be in too much of a hurry to start feeding your horse a full grain feed again because mostly that's what caused it in the first place. So understand that you just have to wait it out. Be prepared to see your horse lose a little bit of weight, look uh, skin and bones. It's okay. You can always put the weight back on the horse again. You can feed him or her up again. And remember that the hoof grows at the rate of only half to one third of an inch per month. So it could take for eight to 10 months for the hoof to grow out and uh, I've written a, put a chart underneath over here which should show you that just how long it takes for uh, the hooves to grow out. So you want to understand that this is going to take a long time to kind of uh, 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 settle down so don't expect this to finish in a week or 10 days or 15 days or a month's time. Dealing with a case of laminitis means that you're committed to looking after this horse and caring for this horse for a minimum of six to eight months, if not more. What are the possible outcomes if you look after the horse and if you manage the case well? If you have caught the case in time, the outcomes are very good. The horses will return to work and it is definitely possible with some love and luck. I've had a mare with a very bad case of laminitis return back to full jumping ability and win even a couple of competitions over the years. Of course, it took us approximately one and a half year to sort her out and to get her back into work. But we made the commitment to save her. 
If you do the same, there is a high chance that you can also manage to pull off the same kind of outcome. If the mare's feet or the horse's feet are not healing properly and the horse is going to have a recurrent set of pain in the feet, you could use the horses as a breeding animal also. What are the causes for laminitis? There are quite a few different causes. Obesity and hormonal problems is one of the main ones. Diseases that are linked with inflammation and mechanical causes. So let's re-understand about these various causes one by one. Obesity and hormonal problems. One thing research has shown beyond all measure that fat horses or horses that are very overweight or horses that are fed a diet that is very high in sugar or carbohydrates have a much, much higher risk of laminitis. Um, there are various metabolic conditions like equine metabolic syndrome, which is very similar to diabetes or Cushing's disease, where, which is a disease where the horse has too much cortisol produced uh, are uh, both big causative problems. In India, in my experience, the most common cause for laminitis is horses being severely overweight and being fed diets that are very high in carbohydrate. I've had people feeding their horses laddus and uh, um, mangoes and all sorts of things that horses should not be eating. Or if they eat, uh, if you want to treat your horse, maybe maybe a one piece or two pieces, but not boxes and boxes and stuff of it. Just, you know, just a little bit is fine. But the main thing, don't keep your horses fat. Fat horses are just as sick as thin horses. You want your horse that is nice and fit. Inflammatory laminitis is another cause. Uh, it's caused by grain or grass or carbohydrate overload. It's basically uh, la horse eating way too much food suddenly. Uh, typically, you'll find a horse that has gotten loose in the night and has gone inside the feed room. Horses are intelligent animals. They know where your horse feed is kept. And they'll go inside the feed room and they'll start eating feed and they'll just eat and eat and eat and eat. And they've eaten so much uh, feed more than they should that they immediately get an attack of laminitis. And in the morning, when you wake up, you'll find the horse standing in the feed room, completely laminitic, unable to move. So that's a grain overload, uh, which you have to be very careful about. If you suspect that your horse has eaten more feed than he should have or uh, the horse has broken out and has eaten too much uh, something that might be triggering it and giving it a laminitic uh, attack first thing put your horse's feet in ice and call your veterinarian the other causes for laminitis that is because of inflammation uh, can come from a very prolonged colic um, horses that have had diarrhea for a very long time and a mare that has retained her placenta or, or that has not dropped her placenta about eight hours post the foaling. If the mare after foaling for still eight hours has left the placenta, has not dropped the placenta, it qualifies as a veterinary emergency. You need to get a veterinary doctor to see her immediately. Do not try to pull the placenta out by hand. Some of the other causes of, effect of, of laminitis would be seps, as laminitis associated with sepsis or you know septic shock or uh, various things. Corticosteroids, usage of certain medications of like dexamethasone or other corticosteroids in extra amounts has been known to cause lamin, uh, laminitis. And of course, using antibiotics incorrectly in the wrong dosages um, or for horses is also a big cause. Mechanical laminitis is uh, something where the laminitis is caused because of pressure or force and uh, typically the one that we will see is a supporting limb laminitis. The horse gets a very bad injury on one foot and is unable to take weight on that and the result is that the other foot gets laminitis because the horse is not able to rest the foot. So if the picture of the grey horse in the, where he's got a bandage on his right front leg, the limb or the leg that is at risk of laminitis is not the right foot, is actually the left foot, which is absolutely fine. Another possible area which could have, uh, which could cause a laminitic attack 
is excessive concussion or riding your horses on a very hard surface for too long. Uh, this can cause damage to the lamellae, the lamella membrane in the feet and over time also lead to a laminitic attack. Of course, one big cause of laminitis also is stress. So it could be a dramatic change in environment, uh, especially for horses that are very fat. Um, uh, you can have many, many different possibilities of what can cause it. The main thing that you have to learn to do is to recognize that this is happening and try and act as fast as you can. How do you also, another thing that you want to do is uh, to make sure that your hooves are properly balanced. So please make sure you get a good farrier who understands hoof balance and trims your horses correctly. How do you prevent laminitis? And I'd like to use the four F's to prevent a laminitis attack. You look after the feet, food, fatness and fitness. So for feet, monitor how your horses move. You should know how your horse is moving. Is he moving correctly? Is something wrong? Uh, very often a horse owner can detect something is wrong with the way that his horse is moving just because they've seen the horse move so much. Um, it's a great thing to do. Watch your horses move. If something's looking off, immediately look at it more carefully. The second thing you need to do is work with a farrier or who knows how to work with horses feet properly and don't just do this on a bargain and try and save yourself some money. It's very important to pay the right person the right amount to make sure your horses feet are well looked after. And uh, I just put it this way, you're not going to drive, you know, uh, have a Ferrari and drive it on MRF tires. You're obviously going to use the right high performance tires for a high performance car. The same thing for horses. It's a high performance animal. Uh, spend that two, 300 rupees additional and make sure that the right farrier is doing your horse's feet. If you notice any lameness or discomfort in your horse's feet, immediately call your veterinarian and your farrier. Fat is the second prevent uh, thing you need to prevent. Make sure that you keep your horse's weight in check. Remember, a fat horse is also a sick horse. You don't want your horses overweight. The fourth F is food. Make sure you feed your horse a balanced diet and avoid feeding a lot of sugary foods. Like I said, no laddus, no ice cream, no chocolates, uh, no mangoes. There's, I, I'm telling you, the, some of the things that I've heard people feed their horses, it is hilarious. That is people food is meant for humans. It's not meant for horses. Hell, if you feed that much of that kind of food to a human, even the human will get sick. So definitely not. Um, make sure your horse has a diet that's high in fiber and uh, has the right kind of balance to it. And fitness is the final uh, part which you need to look after. Make sure that your horse is checked by a veterinarian regularly and make sure that the horse has a regular exercise plan so that the horse is not getting too overweight and is in absolutely good fit shape. A fit horse is a horse that's less likely to get a laminitic episode. I'd like to end this discussion with the key takeaway points. Early detection, the faster you detect laminitis, the better your outcome. Make sure that you have a veterinarian and a farrier on board who understand the disease. Make sure that when and you get a case of laminitis or if you get a case of laminitis, that your nursing is absolutely 100% spot on. You have to be proactive. You cannot sit and take it easy. You have to be very, very aggressive with the treatment. You have to feed your horse correctly. Make sure that you're watching your horses all the time. The more you watch them, the better you're going to be at catching them If in case you have a problem coming up. You have to plan a regular exercise routine, learn about laminitis so that you can prevent it. And of course, prevention is better than cure. Thank you very much for watching.